a minute. I want to hear what Tim Pool has to say about this. This is going to be very telling. Let's watch this. Let's see what he's got to say. At a political rally in Dallas. Okay, and remember, before we watch this, remember that Tim Pool is the guy who has been saying a civil war is coming for the last four years. Tim Pool has been hawking for this shit. So I'm very interested to see exactly what Tim Pool has to say about this. Let's find out, huh? Michael Flynn, the former national security advisor to the president, said that a military coup can and should happen in the United States. He was asked by a Marine who said that he was but a simple Marine, but wondered why can't what happened in Myanmar That's true, happen here? Michael Flynn said it can and it should happen. For those that aren't familiar with, ha with what happened Spoon in Myanmar, spur. it was a military coup sparked by claims of election fraud. Of course, now Michael Flynn is saying it should be the same here. Now, there's a lot of difficult editorial decisions in producing content like this. I'm sure there are many people who say, oh, he didn't call for a military coup. Oh, he's not doing it. He did. I recently criticized Nancy Pelosi when she called, I believe she called the Joint Chiefs of Staff and said, take away Trump's ability to fire nukes. And they said, ma'am, this is a military, that would be a military coup. We can't do that. I have no problem calling it out like it is. And we've heard from many leftists who said that there should be escalation, there should be protests, there should be riots. We called each and every one of those instances a call for violence or a call for escalation. What? In this instance, Michael Flynn did just that. And it was Wait, is Tim quite Pool? scary. Wait a minute. Was is Tim Pool anti? Wait a minute. Is Tim Pool actually having a spine? Oh, is this going to be a treat day? Is this going to be? I need a beer. Hold on. I'll be right back. It's my turn to have a drink. Fuck this. Oh my God. It might be. Let's do it. In a room full of people who cheered at the idea of a military coup in the United States. He made his statement about there, sh there should be one. And people started Smoke clapping got and him. cheering for it. And now I wonder... Have we already entered the hot portion of the Civil War, or is this the threshold by which we enter it? For the past several years, it has been said that we are in a cold Civil War. Some by people you. have argued by you, that by you, Tim Pool, by you, Tim Pool. That was that was you saying that, Tim Pool. That was that was you saying that mostly. That was that was you. For years as a Civil War, but I think it's been substantially worse this time around than it's been at least in my lifetime. Sure, when George W. Bush got elected, people pelted his car with eggs, or I think that's what happened. I don't know. I was really young at the time. Oh, yes. Civil war is when eggs get thrown at the president. Okay. And people were saying, not my president, but, you know, we, we moved on from that. Maybe something similar could be happening now, but we've actually had people die. And we've actually had people storm the Capitol during the counting of the electoral college votes. Uh-oh. I understand. That uh -oh. some people were befuddled and just let into the building. They walked in calmly, had no idea what was going on. But there were many people who stormed into the Capitol and fought with cops. The left now is trying to get a commission on January 6th. And the right is saying it was a riot and nothing more. But it's a grain of sand in the heap. A few years ago, I was talking about the prospect of a hot civil war. And I said, we are watching different factions fight each other in the streets Many people say it's reminiscent of Weimar Germany just before the rise of the Nazis. But I had many people on the What the? I mean, he's right. He's, he, he, what the? What the fuck is happening? Did I shunt into an alternate reality? left and the right tell me I was wrong to suggest it was ever possible there would be a civil war. No, dude. My no, dude. We were... No, the left was mad that you kept encouraging it and saying that it was the left's fault. That the left was the one doing it when it's obviously the right. That's what people were mad about. It's not that they didn't believe you, dude. Argument was this. As the cultural war, the culture war and the ideological split between factions continues to grow, it will seep into government institutions, into financial institutions, and once it reaches critical mass and the highest levels, you will then get a, an, an, an impasse. And that's when fighting starts. Okay. When negotiation is done, when no one cares, 
We're now looking at audits over the election in, in New Hampshire and in Arizona. And the latest news out of New Hampshire is that it wasn't fraud, just a glitch where certain votes weren't being counted or just being given to Democrats, which created a very serious problem. Does anyone really care? Will the right care? No, it just confirms what they already thought in the first place, although it doesn't confirm fraud. Arizona, who knows what we're going to get out of that in the end. But the left thinks it's all a big well, show. Well, we know it is a big show. This is all stupid. Damn. Left-wing sources are saying it's fake news. Mainstream media is saying, well, here's an interesting quirk and glitch. And the right is saying we already knew. When you take into consideration that the former national security advisor for, advisor for the president is saying these things, when you take into consideration that people have been setting fire to buildings and rioting for a year and the media has defended them, where do you think this goes? Dude, they were fighting against these people. Tim Pool, oh my God, he always manages to be so stupid. Dude, the people who were protesting were protesting the people who were doing this shit. Dude, for real. It's like the people who are protesting the government's ridiculous overreach. They're the bad ones because the government is doing an overreach. God damn it. And it's strange to me that I've said this over and over again for years, and it just keeps getting worse. At a certain point, we will cross the threshold into hot conflict. I have people on the left, however. They say, Tim, you're wrong. You're so dumb for suggesting civil war. What would you say to Michael Flynn's statements? And whenever they say this to me, they're like, didn't you say there was going to be a civil war? Dude. Everyone is denouncing this guy. We've all been pointing this out. What are you fucking talking about? Like literally every leftist I know has talked about this. Literally every single one. Welcome back, Zonia. Warren, I'm like, what would you say about January 6th? Now you might just say, people on the right, it was simply a riot. I know, but it's grains of sand in a heap. People think that war is this far off distant idea that you know when it happens. You don't. I've been there. I've seen it. And I'll warn you again now. A Princeton professor said cold civil war. We're in it. Well, with violence and death and the escalation, we're either at the door of hot conflict or we've walked through it and it's just not that bad yet. But we'll see where it goes. Let me, get, let me, let me break down the news for you and, and give you the full context of what's happening. Read this story. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com and Shut become up. a sign up. Find out. Shut We're up, just dude. If you, if you believe in the work that I'm doing, and you agree with me personally, but like the news coverage, sharing this is powerful and it can help bring about some serious change. By the way, if you are here and you haven't liked the stream, like the stream, subscribe to my channel. My show is way better than Tim's. and You know it is. You know it's fucking better. And there's no paywall. My show is free. You get to enjoy all my content for free unless you decide to contribute, which is how you will support me in the show going forward. Let's read the first story. Ex-Trump advisor Michael Flynn says Myanmar-like coup should happen in the U.S. They say, appearing in Dallas at a QAnon conference, Flynn was asked during a Q&A session that was shared in a Twitter video, I want to know why what happened in Myanmar can't happen here. After cheers from the crowd died down, Flynn responded, no reason. I mean, it should happen here. Myanmar's military. Guys, that's bad. That's really bad. Like, look, I think Tim's analysis here is stupid, but he's not wrong. He's not wrong about one thing, I should say. He's not wrong about the fact that it's really bad that we currently have an ex-general and foreign agent running around the U.S. whipping up insane conspiracy theorists to war. That is a bad thing. Tim is right about that. He seized power February 1st and imprisoned the country's democratically elected leaders on the basis of unproven allegations of voter fraud. At least 800 civilians have died and thousands have been arrested in protests that have racked the Southeast Asian nation in the months that followed. Supporters of the Q conspiracy have praised the Myanmar coup and called for the U.S. military to do, to do the same, citing unsubstantiated claims of election fraud. Now I'll pause for a second. It doesn't matter whether you agree or disagree with this. I'm not here to say I know definitively, for the most part, I don't know what's happening behind the scenes and the degree. I can tell you this. I am simply informing you that there is a conflict. It cannot be mended. The bridge is gone. The fissure has grown, grown so wide. The right believes what they do, and you will not change their mind. I won't. 
the left believes what they do, you will not change their mind. I won't. I can only tell you the divide is very real. I can show you the story from Market Watch, Dude. but I want you to consider something. Up top, they say, bias split across 17 sources from ground.news. They show only 13% of the, sto of, the, of the stories written about this come from right-wing sources, 27 from centrist, and 60 from left-wing sources. Earlier this morning, I covered a story about Andy No. That it is it, that many on the left extremists attacked a man they claimed was Andy No. That story was overwhelmingly just reported on the right. You see, you see what's happening here. On the right, they say Antifa violence. <sighs> Let's not even get into that. Andy Nyo is a serial con man and should not be trusted as far as you could throw him. He is a he literally is a collaborator with Nazis, with neo Nazis. Okay, I'm serious. Do not trust anything out of Andy Nyo's mouth ever. Andy Noah's attacked. On the left, they say insurrection, right wing, QAnon. Make sure you're not being, you're not blinded by biased news sources. Make sure you're reading most. I think it's good that many of you are watching this, whether you agree or disagree. But I want to point this out, that Market, Market Watch is said to have a center biased, bias, but I do think it's leaning slightly left on this. They go on to say, Flynn, a former army general, was fired by Trump in 2017. We, we know this. He was then accused by Flynn. Last summer, Flynn posted a video reciting QAnon slogans. Twitter banned Flynn and others in January in a purge of accounts promoting QAnon theories. I want to show you, uh, I want to break down what, what's, what, what's happening for you. I want to show you, first I want to show you a bit of the bias. From Business Insider, and this is linked from MarketWatch, the Omni Dallas Hotel is hosting a QAnon conference. That's a framing device. I, I'll try to, to, to break things down to the best of my ability. I don't know what he's they talking about now. It was actually called for God and Country Patriot Roundup, which will feature prominent conservatives, including uh, former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. The keynote speakers are Michael Flynn, Sidney Powell, Lynn Wood, and George Pod Pod Podopoulos. Yes, yes, this is correct. That is that is a QAnon event. That is a that is a QAnon event. Absolutely, Indicat. Thank you very much for the tier one sub. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Now, the media will call it a Q conspiracy uh, a conference because many of the people there have agreed with or pushed those ideas. It's literally a political conference. Now, what I find so alarming in all of this, what was said by Michael Flynn? I know, again, ma many of you may, may be saying he's not calling for a military coup. Well, many have praised what happened there. We don't know for sure. All that matters is the ideological split. In Myanmar, they, the military claimed there was election fraud, so they intervened. Well, because many on the on the right have stated something similar here in the U.S., of course they would want the military to intervene. Of course they would call for such a thing. Vox.com, a left by a source, writes, Myanmar's coup is uniting a country driven, uh, riven by ethnic divisions. Will it last? They go on to mention this. When the military claimed voter fraud in that election, well, let me, let me go back one. Sue Thit, 30, lived abroad but returned to Myanmar in the past decade when the country with a new constitution began to ease into civilian rule. She wanted to be a small part of that future. She supported Suu Kyi's National League for Democracy and, like the rest of her family, voted for that party in elections this last November. When the military claimed voter fraud in that election to justify its takeover of the civilian government, she knew it was a lie. When the military began massacring protesters, she knew her purpose, to be a small part of Myanmar's future, would now require something different. Out on the streets among the mass of protesters, she felt motivated. We began to understand that it'll be a long road, Sooth it says. It would not be finished in one week or one month. I bring this story up to reference, obviously. The claims from the military was uh, election fraud. But to give okay. you an idea of what will happen should anything like that occur in the U.S. Now, I think it's highly unlikely. Of course, you have many people who believe there's going to be this big intervention or wait, some wait. You know, military move or... What is he saying is unlikely here? Trump, I just really don't see it happening. Many people point out lab leak theory. They say the media was wrong about that. How, maybe they're wrong about uh, Q and about Trump and all that. Sure, fine. I don't know. I can tell you what I'm seeing now. I'm Aren't not here you to support part one of the, the media, other. dude. Just to tell you the you're ideological. Like, you're like one of the most popular political news channels on the Internet. Aren't you kind of the media? What do you mean you don't know? You're talking about this. You're 
you're just saying, oh, you're just shrugging your shoulders at a thing that you've been like actively plugged into. Split is growing. And it really are... feels like he just doesn't know where to go. Like, it feels like he's scared, but he doesn't know which way to go. Am I wrong about that? Am I wrong to say that it sounds like he's scared, but he doesn't know which direction he's trying to go in? Like, holy shit. You're going to be emboldened. And should anything happen, you will get people out on the street in a sustained period uh, period of likely violence. As they mentioned, 800 people had been killed. I want to show you this story from NBC Boston. Interestingly, ground news bias uh, assessment shows that it's 44% right wing, 23% centrist, 33% left wing. So a good mix of people are hearing this news from the mainstream media, NBC Boston. Auditors find no fraud in disputed New Hampshire election. I want to show you the weaknesses of just calling out the bias of the outlet and why you need to read both left and right. They say a discrepancy showing Republicans getting hundreds more votes in a local Wyndham race drew the attention of Trump and his supporters in their effort to find evidence of his wider claim of fraud in 2020. Now, the headline says auditors find no, find no fraud in disputed New Hampshire election. But the headline should probably read glitch causes votes to shift. That's it. Why did NBC Boston just frame it as no fraud when the bigger concern is discrepancies? That's where things get interesting. Let me read you the story. Because they're trying to address the fact that the president is content constantly ad alleging fraud. What? What do you mean? They say there is no evidence of fraud or political bias in a controversial New Hampshire election where a recount and audit has drawn the interest of former President Trump. Auditors mean, concluded dude? Thursday. I believe based on my assessment, oh. that is a true and correct statement. But there's more. Rather, auditors investigating the election in the town of Wyndham believe a folding machine used by the town to try to accommodate the number of absentee ballots in the November election is responsible for mistakenly adding to vote counts for candidates in four legislative seats. Quote, we found no evidence of fraud or political bias. Okay. Mark Lindemann, one of the three auditors and the acting co-director of Verified Voting, a nonpartisan nonprofit organization, said, I have heard no one actually articulate a credible hypothesis of how fraud could account for what we found. They say, the town used the machine to fold the absentee ballots before sending them to voters. Okay. Now All right. I'm going to be completely honest. This is, this is getting boring. Okay. I'm sorry. I hoped it would be fun. This is not fun. This is boring. Okay. I, I think Tim Pool is scared and he doesn't know which side he should try and, and angle towards because on one side, he has fucking Michael Flynn literally advocating for a civil war right now. And then on the other side, he has burned every like good bridge that he has. He knows the left doesn't trust him. Do you think that Tim Pool might be uh, might be getting a little spooked? Oh boy.